Welcome back to Marvel Puzzle Quest with me, P.I. McLeod, and um, probably another short one tonight. Have you gotten the pattern yet? I'm a procrastinator. These Crash of the Titan things will wait till the last minute with me. But hey, I got a whole giant playlist of, God, is it at least 100? I don't know. Hey, John. What's up, buddy? Um, whole giant playlist of, how many is my Crash of the Titans playlist now? 146 videos of my Crash of the Titans playlist. That's crazy. Been doing this for a while. Um, so if you ever need to look back and see what we're doing or how to do something, I've got a catalog. Anyways, uh, we're here for that today. Crash of the Titans, not for Colleen Wing, no. Um, although, let's be honest, probably tomorrow we'll run her second day of Welcome to S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, probably in the evening, unless work is really lenient on me and I can kind of escape for like an hour, but that remains to be seen. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of them, John. I didn't know I had that many either, but let's, let's be honest, I've been playing this game for, I don't know, let's, let's go back now. It's been a long time, so I mean, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> I've only started streaming for so long, but still. Um... By the way, let's talk Colleen Wing real quick. Um, I, I feel like there's something there, but I don't think it's enough. You know, we look at a four-star character and we don't think ever, you know, high meta. It's not like another Polaris is coming probably ever again, because that was kind of huge. Um, but you look at Colleen Wing's powers, and I don't see anything that immediately screams, I have to have her with my five-star dudes. Okay? First off, calming breath. It, it's five. It's cheap. It does a healing thing uh, when you cast it. Extra health for each fortified tile on the board. And then creates a six-turn fortified concentration tile up to three of those max. Okay. The passive is that basically for every concentration tile on the board, her abilities cost three less. Three less. Minimum of three, right? So you can only get this calming breath down to three. So only one concentration is needed to get Calming Breath down to three blue, okay? So don't be thinking that you could do anything else to make it lower. You can't make it lower with Shuri, Heimdall, or anyone else because the minimum is almost always three. I, I can't think of any example where it's not. Um, <laughs> right, John? She plays well characters I rarely use, I assume. I, no, I, I think she's going to be um, another Shuri helper. She's good with fortifies, as you can see here. Uh, she cheapens abilities, so she can make that Shiri shtick of cheapening things even cheaper yet, especially for herself. Um, and, uh, well, I'll continue on so you can kind of see where I'm going. Um, Flashing Blade is probably the least important one. It's only not, it's nine, and obviously that's going to be down to six or three if you have more concentration tiles out. Um, it does damage, duh. Plus double the value of any friendly strike tiles. So this kind of thing makes you think, wow, I kind of want someone to make strikes, right? And where strikes is, you usually think of Polaris or Rocket. I want to in introduce the thought of Valkyrie into your brain. If you have Valkyrie on your team, remember her passive. If an ally takes so much damage, she retorts by making um, a really strong strike tile. So she's going to get more... Colleen will get more out of Valkyrie's passive than anything else. Um, hey, Mark, how's it going, dude? Um, if there are any friendly concentration concentration tiles on the board, remove one, remo remove a concentration tile, and deal 50% extra damage. So she's going to do more damage if she has concentration out, but then again, of course, you're losing some of your concentration. Her passive... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, you take less damage from matches and abilities equal to the value of all friendly strike tiles. Again, Valkyrie. I mean, I know people are talking like Polaris Rocket here, but remember, she has a fortified thing going on here. And Valkyrie's going to feed you AP as well through her... Um, God, I can't think of the name of it. The bounty? The contract? Um, anyways, her black passive. Um... So I'm seeing a combination of Shuri and Valkyrie being good partners for Halloween because you're going to make more strikes constantly for her extra damage she's doing. And Colleen becomes a good tank due to this passive. 
um, and things become cheap for all three characters. Finally, Heroes for Hire. Uh, I know the pass says deal 45% bonus match damage for each Heroes of Hire on the team. Well, that counts her. She herself counts as a Hero for Hire, so let's put it up to five. That's 180% bonus match damage, okay? So she's going to do more, not to mention the Strike Tiles are helping out on that. Um, you create a Fortified Strike when you use this 10, 10 costing ability but let's be honest concentration is going to bring down to seven or four or three okay and not to mention if you do have shuri on the team that's going to be so much cheaper so much quicker um and it's fortified tiles she's going to make uh heal the team for burst of health or any concentration tiles on the board remove one and create an additional fortified strike tile don't forget any fortified tile you match if shuri's on the team she does damage back to the opponent for breaking the the fortification on a tile so i don't know i see like a lot of synergy there but now take everything i just said and try to add a five star into that mix anywhere it just kind of pales like you're gonna put like what heimdall on there uh because he plays the fortifications um maybe or maybe odin i don't know I don't think this is going to shine that well in five star land because every one of her passives helps herself. This is less damage for her, more damage for her, and makes her abilities cost less. So I don't think she's going to be a friend for five stars. She's going to be a friend for four stars. That's just my thoughts. But hey, we'll find out. On Welcome to Shield days one and two tomorrow when I make the video, right? Anyways, let's get on with it. Deadpool Daily, Crash the Titans. We got a double crash this week, so let's dive in. What do we got? Five Star Spidey, Pete Parker. Do you know when this guy came out? I don't know about anyone else, but I was really, really wanting him to even be better than what he is. Not to say he's horrible, because he's not, but he was the first incarnation in Five Star Land of someone that used, I don't know, webs. Good job, Mark. I'm glad you did the first level Welcome to Shield. I, I would too if I didn't, you know, kind of behold myself to a schedule. But um, that's cool. I'm glad you got the first day done. Tomorrow is a real test, right? Am I right? We got uh, tomorrow is always uh, Riri and Mockingbird, you know. Anyways, um, yeah, Pete Parker came up with this passive to make webs each turn and then two abilities that, eat, that do extra depending on the webs you have. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. But as time went on, you became you, you started to learn that uh, he doesn't make enough webs. And, um, you know, the other four-star web dudes do more. They do a lot more, um, passively and actively. I mean, sure, five-star Spider-Man here has um, better match damage and health right off the rip. Um, but at the end of the day, he doesn't really bring everything to the table like miles or like 2099 or shoot even silk or uh, if i'd say anyone else i don't know i think i think infinity and spider gwen can are pretty darn good too but i think those other three i said before are probably the top notch webbers i don't know anyways this guy's good don't get me wrong he's gonna be annoying with a five in blue means he can um he could stun a whole team but I'm only one person, let's just keep that in mind, uh, for a, a very little amount of AP. Costs like five blue to put out a couple webs, or if there's already so many webs on the board, he removes two and stuns the whole team. So we don't have to worry about that as much, because sure, it's cheap, but at least it, it's not... It just got to keep him away from blue. <laughs> That's really all that it says. Um, his green says, I do a lot of damage, but if i have i do more damage for each web on the board up to a max of three it's basically like if he has three webs or more on the board he's going to do like four hits to me of this certain high amount of damage kind of sucks but again if you get rid of the webs when you can it's it's got no bite to it finally his red is probably one of his best powers like if we're talking pure damage because if there's it does like a straight amount of damage but if there's three or more webs it turns one of the webs into a crit tile if there's five or more webs, it turns two of them into crit tiles. And let's let's face it, five star match damage with crits is pretty deadly. So now that we know what we're going against, let's see who we're using. Oh, what's up? I'm sorry, John. Uh, yeah, Chasm. Uh, Chasm for your welcome to shield. Good job, Mark. Uh, I'm glad you got through it. 
And uh, yeah, Chasm is crazy. I'm sure he's going to be a solution for a lot of people when it comes to Welcome to S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, too bad I won't use him, right? <laughs> you know you know me. I got to try to find somewhere else unless, I, unless I'm really, really struggling. Okay, Vulture. I like Vulture. Who doesn't like Vulture? Um, Vulture is kind of crazy. When Vulture came onto the four-star scene, he made everybody's head turn. Because, um, well, it wasn't like an immediate thing. It wasn't like Polaris or America Chavez where it was like immediate obvious value. But his black circling prey, it took a moment, but then everyone caught on. Like, wait, wait a, wait a minute here. You're just saying I can spend six black. I'm gone for two turns. And then my whole team is getting four green, three blue, two black, and one red every turn. Two turns of that? I'm making 10 AP twice. I'm making 20 total AP for six black. And all I need to do is make one more black match. Basically get two more black from somewhere and I can do it again. It's basically like better than invisibility. And this is uh, what caused a lot of people headaches when Vulture first came out. You mixed this um, with someone that abused green and blue powers and uh, he was just, he was a battery for people just a, a, an um, awesome battery and if you do get through his friends you still have to contest with vulture himself and hopefully he comes down from the sky long enough for you to beat him to beat his face in yeah vulture was a nuisance vulture is the entire reason archangel's passive exists where um he automatically you know pulls someone that's airborne out of the sky and stuns them and does damage and whatever that's the whole reason Archangel's passive exists is because of this right here. Vulture did this. Five star, I'm gonna take him down. It is true. It is true. Um, who uses five star Archangel? Nobody, John. Only people that are going against Vulture. And even then, nowadays, I'm not so sure that it's the same. Usually, Vulture is just targeted first now. I and mean, people hit so hard nowadays, you know, like Shang-Chi or heck, Four Star Lamp, Karnak. Um, there's so many people that hit hard enough or stun often enough that it's not scary anymore to go against Vulture because you still have to get six black before he goes up in the air. Just deny him the black he needs and punch him in the face a bunch. Anyways, beyond that, Circling Prey feeds both of his abilities. One fell swoop which at level five it only costs nine i say only because he's feeding himself green every turn he's in the air okay and for anyone else this would not be an only this would be like eh, nine is a mid-tier count no it only costs nine meaning he's only gonna need like a couple turns in the air and he's got all the ap he needs create a three turn green countdown tile that deals a lot of damage but the passive is where you want to look if that exists, when Vulture returns from being airborne, he removes it, dealing damage to the enemy team instead. That's almost 14,000 damage. Of course, keep in mind, I have him max champed, okay? Vulture's good enough and he warrants being max champed. But, 14,000 to the team for 9 green. That's really good. Finally, Hybrid Tech Slicer. Um, I'm going to put up to 5 because you can see what it does, just at max level. It costs 10. It is a little pricey. Once again, you're building blue passively with him in the air. It deals a decent amount of damage, almost like 13.5k there, right? And then destroys up to four random enemy strike, protect, or attack tiles. Um, when Vulture goes airborne, drain 10 blue, which it's the same cost, okay? Except for it's... Note that when something's a passive, it isn't affected by other abilities. So, like, if you had Shuri on your team reducing the cost of Hybrid Tech Slicer down to, like, 7, let's say, you know? Um, this passive would still need you to have 10 to go into effect. I don't know why I had to mention that, but just whenever it says something like that in the ability, you can't cheapen that, okay? When November Vulture goes airborne, you need to train 10 blue AP for the same effect, but it removes invisibilities, countdowns, and repeaters. This is where it's at. I mean, you don't need all this damage per se. It's the ability to say, oh, I'm just going to remove your invisibility tile you're hiding behind or your countdowns, or your repeaters. I mean, we're, we're talking about getting rid of Kitty's Circuit Breaker. We're talking about getting rid of um, uh, Scarlet Witch's uh, passives. Uh, we're talking about a lot of things. There's a lot of things you can get rid of here and make it go bye-bye. 
And then Vulture can continue to have his fun in the air using one fell swoop and circling prey to keep the loop going. Vulture is a really good character. It's kind of crazy that he's not talked about more, but that just tells you how much more powerful people have become in this game. That someone like this has kind of taken a back seat to things. Anyways, enough blah blah blah, right? Let's take on Peter Parker, get off this boost, and turn on the animations, right? Someone new does damage to Airborne, I think. Um, yes. Um, oh, boy. Since Archangel? I mean, you could think talk about Elsa Bloodstone. Like, she, her red in, in Four Star Land, if you use it actively, takes someone out of the sky um, and does damage to them. It, well, it stuns them, but only stuns them if they were Airborne. Um, what else? I uh, want to say Deathlock. I think Deathlock's blue hits people that are in the sky. I'm pretty darn sure about that, honestly. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think you might be thinking of Deathlock. Anyways, um, what do we go for here? Now, when you're playing Vulture, you want to aim for black all the time. But if you don't have enough black, I, I suggest just going for his other two character colors. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer statement. But Vulture is actually pretty strong in those abilities. You shouldn't have a too hard time taking down Peter Parker. Um, I don't see anything to get me blue or black or green easily. So I'm just going to do this and kind of set myself up. See? A little three-way cascade for some black. But he's going to get some blue. I'm going to be stunned if he gets one more of those. I could match this upwards to get a horizontal, but that up above, it'll leave those blues in line for him. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to match it vertically. And he'll still get one. See? Computer. Love it. Shouldn't have even planned that hard, huh? We we know better. And we still fall for it. Okay. So the bad thing is, he's going to fire stick around. But there wasn't enough webs to stun me, so he just makes a bunch more webs. As long as he doesn't get enough red or green to take advantage of it, this will never actually hurt me. Um, I need black, I need green, I need blue. I guess we'll match this team up to see if a blue falls. Nope. See, he's getting a red out of a cascade. It's cute, right? We'll match this green. He'll match the black. See, okay, that's... See, he got rid of, like, all his webs. All his work is gone. Um, I'm just going to do this now. Like, normally what you do is you wait for your... Before you go to the airborne to do this. Because this is three turns... But being airborne makes it basically two turns because you're only in air for two turns before he, you know, enacts it. But whatever. Um, I'd love to have the black. Anyone? Bueller? Um, he might be able to pull off his abilities soon. And it's... I, mean, I don't think it's going to kill me or nothing. And I could check the numbers, but I kind of like the suspense. Call me crazy. Yeah, him. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry, John. Deathlock Blue does damage, ignoring protects invisibility and airborne. Yep. Called it. There we go. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I have my brain on straight. Yeah. <laughs> let's get this. And let's say goodbye to Peter Parker next turn. And we just landed right on him. Because, you know, Peter Parker could never get out of the way of that. Anyways. <laughs> Take my legendary token. Okay, that was an easy enough fight. We had enough green to do the well one fell swoop. We didn't get to go in the air at all. It's kind of a shame. But hey, maybe this fight will do it. Three star Loki. We talked about him recently. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But just a real quick synopsis once again. Uh, black costs five called illusions he shuffles the board a bunch of tiles get shuffled and that's it it can cause matches and cascades to happen because of that shuffling so it is a nice cheap ability at five um, his black um, basically allows him to um, it's called trickery I want to say it takes all enemy uh, what was it strike tiles and turns them into friendly protects for him takes all enemy protect tiles and turns them into friendly strikes for him so it's um, really annoying. It only happens at level 5 though. Like at level 4 and lower it's like a certain number of tiles. But at 5 it's all of them. Which is why wouldn't you have that. 
But um, his green, I think, is better at five. But the computer here has it at three. Uh, that one's called um, Mischief. If I, the player, going against him, am going to make a match four or greater, he makes four countdowns that when they all go off, each of them, steal, each of them steals two random AP. So um, that's a really good stealing ability because it's passive. And uh, there's not a lot you can do about it. Plus, it's countdowns. You try to mix that with people that actually uh, use countdown abilities. It's not bad. Anyways, too bad he's a glass cannon. And he's not even really a cannon. He's just glass. He doesn't have any hard-hitting abilities, but he has low hit points, a lot of support abilities. Poor Loki. Anyways, Vulture's going to go up against him. Why is this the counter? Why are we doing Vulture versus Loki? I have no clue. I, I, I can't think of the logic that developers had in the game for this fight, but poor Loki. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, John. What was that? It always makes matches and cascades. <laughs> I, you know, I can't say I've had that bad of luck. I, uh, I won't, I won't ever, I won't lie about it. I've, I've seen plenty of times it goes through and doesn't get a match or a cascade. Um, but that's just my experience. So remember, he uses black and purple AP. Green may be one of Loki's colors, but he's not actually going to use it. So you can leave it alone knowing that he might grab it, but he ain't gonna use it for anything. Let's go for your black and blue first if you must with Vulture. Um, I'll probably grab this green just to kind of tick him off. Like if you could tick off a computer, I like doing it. <clears throat> he grabbed the blue. I really didn't expect him to grab the blue. That was not in the, well, whatever. I'm grabbing this red to get the black. There we go. He's gonna grab a bunch of purple. Good for him. Oh, we're going to get to go airborne in a second. It's going to be so cool. Now, right here in this moment, before I go airborne, if there was another black match available, I would make it right now. Reason being is because if I could get enough AP to go airborne and stay airborne for more turns later, I'm going to do it. I'd rather grab the AP now before Loki gets to grab it himself. In that case, see there's two black up here at the top. I'm going to make one more match just in case it falls into more black. It didn't. But if it did, that would have been cool to get an extra three black out of that. Okay, so we're safe now. There's no extra black that he's going to grab right this instant. So I'm going to go and start circling some prey. I'm sorry, was that John? It always makes matches against me, usually critter two as well. Jeez, that's horrible, John. So here he goes. He takes his black. I just made, I got 14 green now and six blue and four black. So, I'm going to do this. Okay. Now that I have enough black and green together, I almost want like make a match for just to... Uh, I kind of wanted to show off the, uh, the hybrid tech slicer. Like if I get a match four and then I fire off the hybrid tech slicer to remove some tiles. But I don't think it's really necessary, is it? And there's no, it's going to take a moment to get more blue. Well, maybe not. What if I... What if I do this? I I'm stalling right now. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. I'm not afraid of Loki winning at all, so I just want to see if I can get this to, to pull off. Hmm. So, I want... I'm going to grab more AP, which is basically the blue. I want the blue. Okay. Okay, I have a ton of AP now, right? Is there a match four available? I want to make a match four. I want to make Loki do this thing, right? I was trying to like make a big cascade. Hopefully it fell into place. I don't think it's gonna, is it? It's just gonna taunt me with this. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen, is it? Okay, well, I could cast this blue right now. And, well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do it just for the animation. We're gonna do the blue. 
Then do the green. And I'm going to put on another one just in case he matches it away. Okay, so we have two greens. We have an insurance policy out there. Then we're going to fly. So we're going to shuffle out. One of the greens might get destroyed. Possibly two, but I doubt it. And now he's dead. Circling prey, one fell swoop. And that, see, it goes off as soon as, as soon as I land, one, those one fell swoops go off. In that case, if there was an actual enemy team on the board, the whole enemy team would have took 13 and a half or 14K or whatever it was twice, once for each countdown. You can't tell me Vulture's not good. It's, uh, he's just, he's not Karnak punching his way through cinder blocks. You know, he's not, he's not Polaris putting out tons of sap tiles and stunning people for four turns. So, you know, it's kind of hard to compare. Anyways, that is Vulture's crashes, plural, of the Titan. Cool. Fun times. So tomorrow we get to go through Welcome to S.H.I.E.L.D., Colleen Wing, days one and two. See how she plays and what characters are going to give me to go with. I can't wait to find out for myself, but hey, that's half the fun. Anyways, that's it for me for now. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it, John and Mark. And I will see you guys tomorrow, right? Hopefully. Okay? Talk to you guys later.